You're listening to Something Cheeky, a collection of podcasts where two sisters discuss TV, books, and movies with just enough irreverence and far too many pop culture references. Welcome to Something Cheeky, where we discuss the TV series Vikings. I'm Nikki. I'm Rosanna. While I've watched the entire series, Rosanna has only watched up to what we're covering today, which is Season 2, Episode 3, Treachery. In this episode, we get Lagertha back, but lose Kattegat. Vikings giveth, Vikings taketh away. Rosanna, what was your reaction to this episode? Uh, A lot happened in this episode. The main part that stood out to me when I look back on it was the torture. Ah, yeah. I really didn't like the men shooting the bishop with arrows. That is the side of the Vikings that is not new, but I never like it. There was a lot of blood, a lot of fighting, a lot of what I consider innocent people died. Right. I like the parts where we got more information about our main characters, but just there's there was so much axe in the chest. (laughs) There was a lot of that. And the torture part, you know, we've seen all the violence and the fighting, but it always had a purpose. The torture is it's just for the violence. Yeah, it was kind of jarring. It was. For them not to have any reason, but just for fun, and that they consider that fun. It wasn't even revenge. It was just nope. just to pass the time. Mm-hmm. And they were all disappointed when Athelstan stopped them, like their mom had come in and, and turned off the TV or something. That part bothered me. I didn't like that at all. What was your favorite quote this time? The quote I chose is King Horik. He's talking to Ragnar and says, I like your thinking. But here's my question. Will the Saxons simply invite us to live among them? Yeah, Ragnar. (laughs) You just murdered a whole ton of them. Think they're just going to let you move in next door? Yeah. It seems unlikely. Yeah, it seems very unlikely. (laughs) I thought we would break up the action like we've done before into locations. Because we, we have four different major locations in this episode. Which is a lot. So many updates on different storylines. Especially now that some storylines have broken off to be separate. Yes. Like Lagertha. I thought we would start with Lagertha because I was so happy to see her again. So happy to see her. Even though it was a negative situation. Yes, it was. Just to have her back was nice. So she's in Hedeby, Scandinavia, married to Sigvard, who we very quickly learn is an abusive asshole. Earl Douchebag. Mm-hmm. That works for me. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He hits her and she falls down and gets up slowly. I was, when I first saw this, I was expecting her to get up swinging. Mm-hmm. And when she didn't, I wondered how often this has happened. Mm-hmm. She claims it's never happened before to Buren, but I do not believe that. I don't believe that either. She gets up and has this perfect little dribble of blood down her chin. And I was just, all I could picture was her as a true blood vampire because they always seem to have that, <laughs> that dribble. They just can't eat without making a mess. Right. Or Tom Cruise. And I think that's kind of an iconic picture of Tom Cruise as Lestat. Yes. And then we see Bjorn, and it's Kato from Hunger Games. Was that who it was? Yes. Yes. I couldn't tell if he was somebody I knew or not. <laughs> okay. Apparently, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was Kato. I was always so conflicted about Kato because he was such a jerk in the movie until the very end when right. he understood he was just a stooge for the politicians. It was the, the one time they gave him a redeeming moment. And so he actually got to act instead of just... Because it's easy to act like a jerk. Sure. It's it's harder to be a jerk with layers, I guess. Right, to have some sort of emotion behind it. Yeah, and so it's it's nice that we get to see him in this. And I will say, I love him in Vikings. I think he did a really good job as Bjorn. So in these f- four years, Bjorn has grown a lot... He's very tall. He's 6'2". Oh, that makes sense. Alexander Ludwig. Just massive. Just towering over Lagertha, even. Just watching him, like, kind of hunched over talking to her. Yeah, and how tall is Ragnar? I think he's 6 feet, 6'1". Six yeah, he's not freakishly tall. I think that Bjorn is taller than him. Oh, yeah, he is. The choice of words when Bjorn was talking to Lagertha. How could you let him hit you? The word let... I feel is very perfect right there. I do too. And it's obvious Bjorn has never seen this happen before and says he's going to kill the Earl if it happens again. But Lagertha seems to have been pretty good at hiding this so far. 
It's not like they have makeup she can cover up hits. Maybe she's getting hit in other places. I don't know. Bjorn admits that he misses Ragnar. And it looks a little bit like Lagertha might also miss Ragnar. We see the Earl in the background just for a second. And the one thing that stood out to me was that there's just one Earl chair. When Lagertha and oh. Ragnar were there, there were no two. No lady they... chair. Right. Yeah, it's just him. And they're sitting down at dinner and Sigvard says he wants to make Bjorn happy. But then he just uses it to mock Ragnar and make Bjorn feel stupid. And then just saying no at the end anyway. Yeah, Bjorn wants to go find him, find himself in a cabin in the mountains. And Lagertha looks really proud of that. Yes. Of, of him wanting to live on his own. But yeah, Earl says no. And his reason's stupid, I think. Because you would think any Viking would find that commendable. But that's really all we get of them this episode. It's just two scenes, really, to find out where Lagertha is. I'm hoping we get to see her a lot more in future episodes. Me too. In the historical figure, Lagertha, in her history, she is married to a powerful man. And some of the the history plays out in this show. Some of it's altered, but it's pretty much her actions in history are reflected in this show. And it's really fun to see the way that they integrated that. Yeah, that's cool. I'll tell you more about it as we see each one. We get to Wessex. The Vikings are all walking through this big field with super tall grass and see a minster, which is a great church that has like cathedral status, according to the internet. It's apparently Winchester. They're all expecting a lot of treasure because it's an important church. We see Eckbert for a moment saying that he had expected them and also find out he had been at the court of Charlemagne, which sounded very fancy. Yeah, definitely. I always forget that, you know, different famous figures lived at the same time as each other. And Eckbert's history... I looked up his history as well, and there's not much about him in Charlemagne that I could find. I didn't see anything saying that he had been at his court, but maybe I just didn't find that information. He married a woman who had a connection to Charlemagne. But I don't think we've we've seen his wife, have we? I don't think so. Okay. Just his son. What is your first impression of Eckbert? I know you saw him in the bath, but we didn't really get much there. Well, he spends a lot of time in the bath. Two episodes, he's in the bath. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like his story that he was telling when he uh. was moving around the figures. I thought it sounded really pompous. I think he thinks really highly of himself. Yeah. I think that he probably feels like he deserves unconditional devotion from his subjects. Does seem that way. Do you think that, from what you've seen so far, what Athelstan said about him being very similar to Ragnar is true? So far, no. I'm not sure how Athelstan knows that they're similar. Has he met this king before? Well, he said that's what he's heard. So, based on apparently a rumor, he (laughs) thinks that two people, one of which he's never met, are similar. I just don't know how that can be. Maybe he's heard that the king is ambitious, and we know Ragnar is ambitious, but the king seems very serious And Ragnar is much more casual. You know, he jokes around. He says silly stuff. He's, he plays to a crowd. And the king just seems like he takes himself very seriously, I think is the difference. Maybe it's not as much about personality as about actions. They both seem pretty strategic from what we, I mean, we saw Eckbert and he said, well, yeah, he, he let the church get attacked because he wanted to know where they were. So that's cunning and scary. That he's willing to do that. Well, I know that Ragnar, as an earl, cares about his community. And Mm. it doesn't seem like Eckbert gives people as much value as Ragnar does. Uh, So maybe it's just the ambition. Maybe so. And Eckbert is, he has quite a large kingdom. The historical figure took over like three different large territories. Yeah, he is uh, moving along and power hungry, it seems like. We meet his son, Aethelwolf. We don't really see him for more than a second, so we don't get much about him yet. He is um, charged with putting together an army and spying, get some intel on the Vikings. And very quickly we see the Vikings approaching the church. A monk sees them coming through the field. That must be terrifying as a holy man to look over in the field and suddenly there are a bunch of people sneaking up to attack you. And rings the bell, soldiers start getting everyone into the church. Were you afraid it might be like the last time the Vikings came into a church? Um, no. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, 
I thought that the people would hide better. Oh. So, I, yeah. They were hit, hidden pretty well. No, I mean, I, I thought they would hide better than the people at the last church. Oh, oh, yeah. I wonder, I mean, it didn't look like a new hidey hole kind of thing. But I wonder if places have heard about being invaded and have, uh, from Northmen, or if it's just, if they're used, because they must be used to some sort of invasion if they even had that at all. Yeah. I mean, you don't build a panic room unless you're actually afraid you're going to get attacked. Unless you planned a panic. (laughs) I don't know. Who else would be attacking them? I guess other English people trying to get more land? Maybe. Though you would think, it seems like all the people in that area are Christian, and Christian invaders probably aren't going to destroy a church and kill all the townsfolk. But maybe they will. I don't know. What was okay in battle and what wasn't? Right. What were the battle rules? Yeah. The Vikings start fighting. The soldiers come out right away. Applestand is in the front line. No hesitation fighting these soldiers. It seems like he's completely gone into the Vikings' fold. And I wondered, what if he has to fight monks? We quickly find out what happens if he has to. Yeah, I think he did that because he was startled. And I think if he had taken just one second... He Mm -hmm. never would have killed that guy. The fact that Athelstan now has killer instincts and reflexes shows just how much he's changed in these years. I think also, too, though, if you're invading a place and you go into a building and you hear a sound, that's self-defense. I'm not sure those are the exact (laughs) words I use, but I get it. Well, I mean, I think that, that he's spent all this time fighting and training and he's been trained to, well, be ruthless, I think. Yeah, be prepared for a threat. But I think part of it also is protecting yourself. Yeah. Live to fight another day, right? Yeah, it's helpful, too. The Vikings take down the Saxons with no trouble. Yeah. Just cutting right through them. I think this may also be the first time we've seen the use of a bow. Have we seen that before with the Vikings? I think, haven't, haven't arrows been shot at a shield wall before? Yeah, but was it from Vikings? Oh, from I see English? what you're saying. I don't remember ever seeing the Vikings with bows before until this episode. I did think it was weird when they pulled a bow out. And suddenly everyone had bows all over the episode, too. Yeah. And Torsten has a bow now. I don't remember seeing him carrying a bow before unless I just missed it. Torsten is really good with it, too. Just taking out people on horseback. Yeah. A little too good. <laughs> <laughs> Very precise not to hit a horse when someone is galloping toward you. Yeah, I think this battle and also the battle at the end, I think some people's aim was too good. (laughs) At the end, a couple of times when Rolo was throwing spears, Uh, it's like, okay, but... (laughs) It was very impressive. But every time, (laughs) every time it goes right (laughs) through the chest... I wondered how they did that, too, how they did those stunts, because the way it hit those people just with this thwunk so hard, they had the physical knockback when they were, you know, running forward. I'm not sure how they, how they did that. Those people just must have had serious bruises. I didn't even think about the fact that these were real people (laughs) and not actually getting stabbed with spears. They had so much forward momentum when they were running, and then it was just this, oh, you could to see the impact and it just threw them back. I wonder if they did something where they had a harness and somebody yanked them. Well, yeah, I was thinking that because I don't know what the budget is for this show, but that's something they could put on and then erase out lines, I guess. Mm, Yeah. I'm not really sure how else that would be possible. Yeah. It was very visceral when I watched that part. Just pretty much for me when I'm watching it, these are Vikings that are being killed. These are not actors pretending to be killed. (laughs) I I go full on, this is a true story right now. It's a documentary on Vikings. (laughs) (laughs) They had really good teeth then if they were real Vikings. (laughs) Uh, Ragnar looks up at the bell tower and seems pretty impressed. It's much taller than anything I've seen in Scandinavia. He's impressed with a lot of weird stuff, actually. He is. He's like, ooh, this bread is good. Ooh, grain. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> muffins. Yeah, he doesn't care at all about the treasure. He's right. like, hey, has anybody tried this? It's really good. <laughs> 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 I 
And that really is his farmer coming out, I think. Yeah. We get another nice shield wall with Torsten standing majestically above them with his bow Mm -hmm. pulled taut. That must have been so tiring holding because he had that bow drawn for a long time. And bows are heavy to, to hold back and with such a big bow too. It would need even more pressure. Okay, real bows probably oh fine i'm just saying they probably made it out of something a little lighter Pretty loose yeah <laughs> but i mean the um just the pressure of the tautness of the string yeah that takes a lot of a lot of pull maybe it was a rubber band i don't know maybe so. that would actually be really easy it would <laughs> <laughs> now i'm just imagining really sad little shooting arrows and it goes froop, right into the ground in front of you <laughs> when you let it go wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> they go into the church which appears to have no people or treasure. Floki immediately, there should be treasure. He said there would be treasure. Right up to Athelstan. This whole episode we see him, he's following around Athelstan. Yeah, just waiting for him to mess up. Pick, 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 pick. He's just picking at him. Yep. It's like when siblings, you know, Hmm. one of them follows the other around, just trying to get him riled up. I I wonder if there's some sort of rivalry because... (gasps) For Ragnar's affection... Floki's jealous. I wonder if Floki misses Bjorn. Oh, it seems I don't know. like they kind of had a re- little relationship. Yeah, they got along, and he was the uncle that didn't betray his father. Exactly. <laughs> he was his uncle by friendship, not by blood. Aww. <laughs> blood is not thicker than water, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, if if you wonder what we're talking about, I sent Rosanna an article the other day that was talking about some different phrases that people have been using the opposite of how they should be used included blood is thicker than water the problem with that phrase which means that you know you should put family over other things over friendship the problem is that the actual phrase is blood of the covenant is thicker than water of the womb so it's actually the opposite it means blood of the covenant friendship is more important than family or a stronger bond And so Rosanna was surprised about this. Yeah, it's the people that you choose that are most important to you, according to the saying. Yeah. So Athelstan leads them to the treasure hidden underneath the altar. And they pull out the bones. I was a little surprised that Athelstan did not flinch when they started waving the bones around of this saint. Even though he's not supposedly not Christian anymore, there's still still a reaction you're going to have when something is that ingrained in you. It kind of got me. I haven't been a Catholic in 20 years, and it still made me feel like, eh, for a second. And it's also not like modern times where we see skeletons all the time on TV yeah. and, you know, the internet and movies and all this kind of stuff. Skeletons are probably not something that they see every day. It seems like it would have been slightly shocking, at least, even just to see it. Yeah. And just to throw a skull around? Yeah, Ragnar's holding the skull like he's freaking Hamlet. When he's asking what a saint is and what miracles are. When Ragnar and Athelstan, when they were having their catechism lesson (laughs) about miracles and saints, they zoomed in on Floki in the background for a second, looking slightly worried. Mm -hmm. Do you think that was more jealousy or something else? I think that he will always be skeptical of Athelstan's faith. Uh, We've never actually heard him call him by name. Only priest. And that Torsten finds the people under the floor, immediately swings in with an axe to start killing them. Terrible. Why kill them? What were they doing? I know. They're freaking fish in a barrel. Have some more slaves. What is the point of killing people that can't defend themselves, that have nothing else to offer? You've taken everything. And maybe he just killed one of them to be an example to the rest. I'm not sure. We didn't, we didn't find out what happened there. Because I guess the hundred other bodies laying around weren't a good enough example. <laughs> Athelstan discovers the scribing room and has some nostalgia about it, it looks like. It's interesting to remember how different he looked the last time he was in one Mm -hmm. compared to now with the tonsure and the the way his hair was and dressed in his monk's robes and now he looks so much tougher. And even though it was one season, he does look years older. He does. He also looks... A lot more muscular. No, we haven't seen him with his shirt off, but he looks larger physically, which, I mean, he I'm sure he had to do training. Sure, for fighting, definitely. When he did not have to do that for the first season. No, not at all. 
He was a, a meek monk. We're just going to drag you from place to place. You don't need to work out. Yeah. He kills the monk, and I couldn't tell if he was more sad about killing the monk or getting the blood on the book, <laughs> which also seems to bother him. I think he was sad that the monk was dead, and also he was maybe upset that he's gotten to the point where his first reaction is mm. murder. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's probably a little unsettling. And then he turns right around and tries to save the bishop by telling him to run when he sees him. And the priest wastes time saying they're going to crucify him and they'll stop him. And and Floki comes in. Of course, Floki comes in now and not right after he killed the monk when he could have looked better yep. in Floki's eyes. But the timing, the timing just is so bad for Athelstan. Also, do they still crucify people in 750? I think so. Okay. I think even later than that. The bishop gets stripped down, tied up, and Horik starts shooting arrows at him, and just my estimation of Horik just goes down. Athelstan slits the bishop's throat. More murder, but it's really a mercy at that point. Exactly. And then we see Ragnar in the bakery. Do they not have wheat in Norway? I don't Has think so. Has he never so. eaten bread before? Okay. Well, I'm sure he's had bread, but I bet their bread is lighter and sweeter and I, I think their grain is probably different or easier to grow or not as tough. They probably just get a better end product. And you know, they have cows for milk and butter. I haven't seen any cows. I've seen goats. Mm -hmm. Can you make butter out of goat's milk? Yes. Okay. So they probably have some. I mean, I don't know if they do, but you can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then he hides the little boy, which made me happy. Me too. From the other Vikings, like, are they in the habit of killing children? I don't know if they're in the habit, but they're not opposed to it. That's, I guess that's true. I was trying to find out if they did that. I wasn't able to find it, but in the course of looking it up, I found out that they did practice infanticide. Why? Which is really upsetting. Yeah. Well, you know... Deformed kid or a, a sick kid, you know, baby. Kind of like the Spartans, I guess. I guess. Also, women, which turns out they think that female infanticide was some of the cause of the shortage of women that then caused them to raid to get more women. They were killing baby girls? Yeah, because they wanted boys. And they didn't want to have to support girls. It's like a really, really terrible version of the Chinese one child law. Mm hmm. That was around for so long. Yeah. Which now China has a shortage of women. Of course they do. Yep. Who saw that coming? So How could weird. you ever think that would happen? People would want boys instead of girls. We get back to Eckbert. I love his voice. It's really soothing. I just kind of want to listen to him read an audiobook or something. <laughs> it's uh, up there with Benedict Cumberbatch. And mm. I heard Tom Hiddleston read some Shakespeare sonnets once. Ooh. It was very nice. I bet. Yeah. I don't know what it is about English accents. I feel ridiculous saying this, but it just makes people sound smarter. It does. I guess. Yeah. Hey, all right. Not all English accents. I know British people listening right now are like, you've heard Cockney, right? Come on. Just like um, in America, there are different types right. of American accents that make you appear different ways. I mean, I guess there is the there is the stereotype that Southern people aren't as smart. I wonder how that stereotype came about. You know, maybe it's because it seems like there are much, they have larger swaths of rural areas, and that's where you get the hillbilly stereotype. Maybe because they use more abbreviations. I guess like y'all and ain't and. Well, and they take you know a phrase and sort of jumble it all into one word. <laughs> without pauses in between. So maybe maybe they just don't sound as educated. I really wish I wasn't thinking of Jeff Foxworthy right now, but yeah, I am. Yeah, Jeff Foxworthy. I'm trying to think of one of the, what's one of the phrases. G yet? Did you eat yet? For those of you who don't understand what that means. You're not here. That's get on out of here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, there are a ton of them. I think that one might be my favorite, though. It's pretty bad. It has so many vocal highs and lows. Get on it all here! It's five words in, in one sound. Yeah. That's pretty good. 
Though it's weird because when I say it, because in my head, I'm still saying every word. It's just that they all meld together. So like a contraction? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> okay, let's see. Eckbert is again in the bath, but now with some company. Gross. Including the bishop. Who should have been more into the water. Oh, give him a break. There was too much of him showing. His knee was bent and his foot was up. I mean... I could have done without, like, the, the here's my junk. Luckily, yeah. it's covered with a towel. Exactly. Um, but one of the other guys speaking he wanted to know why they didn't do more to protect Winchester. Eckbert seemed pretty cavalier when he was talking about how he has lots of important sites to protect and he can't protect them all. And now he knows where the Northmen are, so didn't that work out? Also, that the bishop was a necessary sacrifice. What Eckbert said, as a man of God, I assumed he welcomed the opportunity for martyrdom. So much shade. Yes. He gets the bishop to to say, of course, they all welcome martyrdom. To admit that he'd be willing to die for it, too. Well, why don't you go and give give it a try? Now that you mention it, I do have a task for you. <laughs> so good at twisting people to his will. I felt like at this point it was starting to get exciting again, the season. Even though there were fights and things, it just wasn't quite... It wasn't really keeping my attention in a really great way. It's hard for me when, when there are four locations when the story is spread right across and the characters are not together it just it's distracting to hop from one to another yeah there was a lot of moving back and forth here i mean i've i've condensed all the wessex stuff together but yeah we, we were jumping all over the place too mm -hmm. yeah we get to the camp in wessex where all the vikings are and floki is taunting athelstan he's saved the book for him and some hand bones gross Still doesn't believe it when Athelstan claims that Odin's now his god. At that moment, I don't know what it was, but Athelstan George Blyden looked just like the guy who played King Louis in the Three Musketeers from the early 90s. Oh, yeah. He does kind of look like him. Uh, it's Hugh O'Connor. And I don't think I've seen him in anything since the Three Musketeers, but maybe. Yeah, if I have, I didn't recognize him. Yeah, but they looked super similar at that moment. They do look alike, yeah. When Floki brought out the bones, I wondered how many relics were destroyed by Vikings when they pillaged and only cared about the treasure that they found. And Horik and Ragnar are talking, and Ragnar wants to stay and get some land and farm it because it's so much easier to farm there. Starting to sound like a socialist. If we lived here, we could feed everyone. So great. We've got Ragnar's Bernie Sanders. Much more violent <laughs> Bernie Sanders. <laughs> And then we find out the bishop has been sent to treat with the Northmen and can just barely ride a horse. It takes, what, five guys to get him back on the horse, and even then he still falls at one point when he's leaving. And why didn't he have a carriage or a something? A cart, I guess. Yeah, I'm not even sure they really used carriages, but... Okay, a, a cart then. Ragnar is just messing with him so much, rolling up his vestments and sticking them under his chin and kind of poking at him. And saying that he wants to make peace. And then Horik kills a dude out of nowhere. Just, wait, wait. Oh, now let me slit your throat with this axe. What the hell was that? I think he did that maybe so the bishop would take back the message, hey, they're saying they want to make peace, um, and they're so violent that we really should do that because otherwise they're just going to keep killing us. Oh, okay. Because they have no problem doing it. Also, when the bishop, when he said the word king, mentioning Eckbert, mm -hmm. Horik did like this twitch of his head and kind of looked, looked weird. And I wondered if, if it bothers him that there's another king that he's going to possibly have to deal with. I'm sure it does. Because where he is, it looks like there's just one king. He is it. Right. There's nobody else on his level. He is all by himself. Which I also think it's kind of strange. I thought this during the episode that he's fighting on the front line. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Well, I guess it's, it's more weird for the English kind of idea and... Um, but but Horik is not an earl. He's a king. Yeah. So I feel like there's a pretty substantial distinction. But, you know, in Viking times, in that area of the world, it becoming a king, becoming an earl was not hereditary. You had to take it by force and hold it. And when you died, it did not necessarily go to your children. So if you're going to keep it, you're going to have to keep up into fighting shape. Also to keep the respect of the people that are following you. 
to remind them that if they stop, they're going to be in trouble. It's not just, oh, I don't feel like doing it, but right, that's true, that you're yeah. still dangerous. And to give them uh, somebody to look up to, to, that it's worth to fight for. Yeah, inspire them. Then we get to Jotaland, Scandinavia, to where Jarlborg is. And he marries Helga's sister. Oh, the actress, you mean? <laughs> yep, the actress. I thought she looked sister. just like Helga. I was like, wait, how did Helga get there? <laughs> and I figured it wasn't her, but you're right. Yeah, they look a lot alike. Yeah, so Helga and I don't think we got her name, but they're both the daughters of Michael Hurst, the show creator and the writer. I feel like if they weren't the daughters, they would not get as much screen time as they do with those characters. Yeah, that could be. Like a side character's girlfriend. Right. We see them and they actually get to talk, unlike a lot of other people's. Like, we never see Torsten's wife or girlfriend or whatever he's got going on, a side piece. And basically, like Siggy, she's kind of the only extra person we get. Very bravely, his new wife offers to drink the wine and he, he can't handle it, so he does it himself. Even before that, he, he like closed his eyes as she was about to drink it. Like, he, he just couldn't do it. He was afraid to, to see what would happen. And he, the Borg uses this lovely moment to bring up his feud with Horik and Ragnar. And how they were insulting all of them, him and everyone there, including his wife's family. And so I wonder, is her family someone important? Or do they have a lot of fighting men that he can use? Maybe it was a marriage of attraction and, and usefulness, a political kind of marriage. I still don't think it's fair that he blames Ragnar more, or not that he blames him more, but that he's willing to have a harsher reaction. So here's what I thought about that. He mentioned the treachery of Rollo, the drunken brother. I think that he is focusing more on Ragnar, not because he's more angry at Ragnar, but because Ragnar's lands are going to be a lot easier to get than Horik's. I thought about that, and I think that's true. But going after Ragnar is not punishing King Horik. But if he can get Ragnar's lands and maybe his people, then if he does go against Horik, he'll have a better base to work with. Well, he's going to have a hard time using Ragnar's people since they killed them all. That's also true. I don't know. I don't know either. I think he has a misplaced anger. <laughs> because Ragnar seemed very apologetic. Ah. Uh. When he said, you know, the deal is off. Yeah, he was not happy about it either. No, not at all. And it would have been nice for them to have those extra people and extra ships. I wondered what the Vikings did when they went off to raid. How did they hold on to land that was theirs? I couldn't find an answer. They didn't leave enough people there to protect it. Right. It, so maybe they did in history. They actually left people behind for protection. Uh, maybe the raids weren't as large. Maybe they didn't send as many fighting men. I'm not sure. But I wondered about that. Maybe they had gentlemen agreements. Huh. You can attack us, but only when we're not out on a raid. I don't know how likely that'd be to, to work, but yeah, it's a possibility. <laughs> because that would be good for all of them to make that agreement. Yeah. We get to Kattegat. Before all the Borg stuff happens, Aslog has a son. We see the serpent pupil that he has, Sigurd's snake in the eye. She seems pretty defensive, when, when she saw that Siggy noticed the eye and she said, the cigarette snake in the eye. Like, you want to you do something about it? Kind of thing. Was she saying that that was the rest of his name? Yeah, that's his name. That's terrible. Yeah, cigarette snake in the eye. That's a terrible name. Well, you'll find out some other people get additions to their name as we go on. Okay. I really like the one for another person, but I can't say it because it's a spoiler. So it's going to have to wait till you see it happen. So it turns out she did actually prophesize this correctly. Were you surprised that her prophecy came true? I don't know if it was a prophecy or if she cursed her own baby. <laughs> because it seems like she was trying to get back at Ragnar. Oh. And by saying it, she made it happen. I don't know if it was a curse because it wasn't necessarily anything detrimental. No, but when she was talking about it to Ragnar, it sounds like she was saying, and this baby's going to be born with a snake in his eye. Mm, yeah. Like, because of what you're doing. It was because of her father, and he fought the dragon. That's not the same as a snake. The dragon was called a worm, and it, it was a serpent. A dragon was a serpent with wings, basically. So that's the connection, from my understanding. I'm not saying that she actually did curse the baby. Well, whether she cursed the baby or prophesied something that was already going to happen... Were you 
surprised that this came true. That there was actually a snake in the baby's eye? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure how they were going to do that. So does this give more credence to other things that she has seen? I think that's fair. Okay. I kind of thought maybe he was just going to have, like, a, like a regular eye and, like, a reptilian eye. Like, like a snake's eye, not a snake in his eye. Oh my god, okay. Like, like the cat kind of shape, the... Yes. Yeah. That would have made more sense. <laughs> would it have? I'm just saying, a snake, a snake-shaped <laughs> pupil? That's oh, really man. weird. <laughs> and, also, what does that mean for him? Is he just going to be the kid ever makes, everybody makes fun of because he's got a snake? in his eye or does it mean something for his future what do you think i don't know i think people are gonna make fun of him <laughs> <laughs> which is not fair no but does it mean he has some sort of a great destiny related to snakes uh -huh. maybe he'll be a snake charmer not much time later borg shows up with some boats and cats again. And luckily they're seen way ahead of time because they have this section out out to the ocean. Siggy wakes up Rolo, who apparently is still a drunkard. I, I was kind of hoping he might change a little bit or perk up a little bit after the last episode. He did not. Yeah, I think he was hung over. He starts gathering people together and having them set up barricades, getting everyone prepared with weapons, and apparently stocking the marketplace with arrows and spears mm -hmm. that they get to later. <laughs> it's their secondary fighting spot. Siggy shows up ready to fight, wearing some armor, having a sword. Rolo finally looks protective, like the first time he seems to actually care for her. And he says, you're not a shield maiden, you're not Lagertha, Siggy said. So she obviously knew how Rolo felt about Lagertha and is not happy about it. <laughs> Do you think Rolo even still loves Lagertha? It's been years since he's seen her. I don't know if I can answer that because I don't know if Rolo knows mm. how he feels about her. A lot has happened. Yeah. Um, and I thought also that he was showing some affection for Siggy. But based on what I already know about Rolo... I wasn't sure if that was just for her benefit. You know, I would like it if he showed and had actual affection for her because yeah. that would be better. <laughs> but yeah. I just, based on what I already know, I find it hard to believe. Do you think that if Lagartha had divorced Ragnar but stayed, that Rollo may have not gotten to this point trying to get Lagartha? Or do you think he would have just gone down this spiral no matter what? I think he was headed this way. Okay. No matter if Lagertha had stayed or not. Feeling sorry for himself. Yep. So Siggy leads the women and children off to the mountains. It's Helm's Deep all over again. But no, Gandalf to come save them. Very <laughs> sadly. All the soldiers get to land and Borg approaches this really motley crew of soldiers. If you even want to call them soldiers. They're just, they're regular people. They're young people. They're old people. They, they're holding uh, sticks and a uh, blacksmith hammer. They've just got whatever they can find at this point. They do not look very intimidating. No. Not at all. Rollo is in his element once they start fighting, though. This actually was the best thing that Rollo has done for several episodes. Ah. Is to get up, do what needs to be done, protect the people, just find a purpose. Yeah. I think him having a purpose... Help. I still wonder what it'd be like if we had seen him be Earl instead of Ragnar, just because he, he seems to have not not just the the want for it, but he's pretty good at leading. Mm -hmm. I, I still kind of wish that we could have seen it where Ragnar went off and raided and Rollo stayed and protected the town mm -hmm. whenever Ragnar was gone, and that was the, the purposeful setup. Because I was going to say, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're right, it wasn't the goal. If they had been able to to share that kind of power and make it work everyone would have been better off and happy yeah and Rolo wouldn't have felt like his only course of action was betrayal right that's something that ragnar was very short-sighted about the way Rolo was going to react to the changes that were happening and honestly ragnar's so far he doesn't seem to be a great leader he's a great captain mm -hmm. he is not a great politician nope or earl 
And he was stupid to let Lagertha go because she was really good at it. Oh my god, yeah. She was amazing. Can you imagine... Okay, I don't want to picture Rollo and Lagertha together, but they could have been a real power couple as uh, as leaders. They could have led without being a couple if Ragnar was away. I wonder even then if, if Rollo would have resented having to share that power with a woman. With anybody, really. That, that could be true. All right, enough what ifs. <laughs> what actually happened? <laughs> Jarl Borg is not super likable, but I love the actor. He's so good. He gets these crazy eyes. He does. When he's excited. And it's so much fun to watch him. He and Rollo fight, and it's great. They don't get to fight very long. I wanted a lot more fighting between the two of them. Yeah. It could have gotten epic, but it just was over in a second because they each got pulled away by other fighters. Rollo gets everyone to fall back to the marketplace, and Borg says, That's right, Rollo, run. Run like you always do. He's got a pass all of warriors, and Rollo has a bunch of random people with sticks. I'm pretty sure he had no choice but to have them run away. Of course. And, like, regroup. Yeah. And they obviously have a plan. You know, they get everyone coming in through a little, you know, small area so they can stop them a little better. And they stop some of the warriors, but they can't win. Some random old guy who, in the closed captioning, was listed as Old Warrior, didn't even give him a name or anything, (laughs) says it's Rollo's duty to save the sons of Ragnar. And the gods are fine if you save yourself to fight another day. I'll tell them what you did. Yeah. Yeah. Did he remind you of Davos? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Doesn't he kind of look like him? He does. Yeah. He's got the beard. and the, I was yeah. like, is that? No. <laughs> kind of. Oh, I love Davos. Me too. The Onion Knight is the best knight. <laughs> so Rolo runs away. I was happy that he finally had a moment where he seemed regretful about his actions. He He wasn't doing what he wanted to do, but he was doing it for the good of somebody else. Finally. Yeah. Because you know he would have stayed there and fought Borg. Yes. And probably died. Yeah, probably. And I think he was willing to. Yeah. But he gets away safely and he gets to where everyone is waiting up on the high hill and watches Kattegat completely decimated. And then the last scene is Borg walking in to the longhouse. It's completely empty. There are dead bodies everywhere. Young people. I mean, this is what Ragnar had been trying to avoid all this time was the death of more young people. And he's just laughing, laughing about it. Next week, we're going to discuss Season 2, Episode 4, Eye for an Eye. Any predictions on that name? Eye for an Eye. Well, Borg is definitely in the revenge game right now. Oh, yeah. But I feel like he's already gotten that point. I can't imagine he's going to try to go up against King Horik. I think he would have already if he was going to. He would have started there. Did King Horik's son die when he got shot with the arrow? We haven't seen him since. He's got two sons. Right. We still saw the other one. Yeah, I did see the other one. Yeah, we haven't seen Ari in a while, so I'm assuming he must have died. But it's weird, though, because Horik never said anything about him. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like that's a piece that, you know, he would go after for that. Plus, he doesn't actually even know who specifically shot him. Maybe, oh, maybe. Oh, what? Maybe Ragnar is going after Borg. Ooh. Because he came to his place and he killed a bunch of people and he ran off his family and, you know, a new baby and two little sons. Right. Maybe he's going to go after his territory. Or maybe it's going to go back to Bjorn and Earl Douchebag. Ah. Because he hates him because he knows at least once he hit his mother. Yes. So. And he really wants to leave. I'd, yeah, just let him go, dude. So, out of all of those half ass theories, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm leaning towards the Ragnar v. Borg. All right, Rosanna, what is your top three this episode? The top three questions I was left with at the end of the show. Why does King Horik hate the bishop more than his gods hate the bishop. Oh. He seemed personally offended that this person was a bishop at all. He did. He hadn't even really said anything to him, like, you're going to burn in hell and my God's better than your God. <laughs> Nothing. He didn't say anything of that. He just, said, he just said that he hated him more than the gods hated him. Yeah, that was weird. 
it seems like a really over-the-top statement. Also, he didn't seem to take anything out on the monks. It's yeah, just the what bishop. that deal? I, I know it's not that he's ever seen it before. It wasn't a personal thing. It was because the guy was the bishop. Yeah. But why did he hate him so much? I don't know. I thought that was really weird. It, yeah, it was. There wasn't a really great explanation for that. Maybe it was just an excuse for him to torture him. He didn't need an excuse. It's true. <laughs> These people don't need reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the second question was, what was Jarl Bohr laughing at at the end? Ah. He looked around and he's like, oh. My theory for this one is that it was a couple of things. One, maybe he was laughing because he had gotten the best of Ragnar. Well, I guess three things. He also got the best of Rollo. He made him run away. And three, it was so easy. So easy. He hardly lost any men in that fight. And now he has another territory. When Ragnar comes back, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But he's got his town. Maybe he expects to just hang out at Ragnar's house until Rollo eventually has to come back. But the thing is, too, with this character, I kind of still don't blame him that much. I don't think you should go kill old people and young people and, you know, women and children. I don't I don't agree with that part. But he has a valid reason for being angry and wanting revenge. I can't be mad at him for that. If we watched this show when it was from his point of view, I'd completely be on his side. Well, and also, you know, you see these other Vikings and... They're going to England, to these far-off lands, and they're just murdering people left and right without any concern for human life whatsoever. And theirs is just for gold. He's fighting because he was betrayed, and he and he made an agreement that they backed out on, and that's somebody's word. And I think that that's important to them. That makes them oath breakers, which is one of the three worst crimes. Yeah, okay. And so, my third question which I'm hoping is going to get answered as we go through some more episodes. Why did Lagertha marry Earl Douchebag? <laughs> she didn't have to marry another Earl. She seemed content to be a farmer's wife when she was. Why didn't she find somebody with less political affiliations? Just less, I don't know. The less guy's importance. A, yeah, the, and the guy's a jerk. How does she yeah. not see that at first? Did she marry him? Knowing he was a jerk? That doesn't sound like Lagertha. And he slapped her across the face and she just took it. Yeah. That is not the Lagertha we know. No, not at all. If Ragnar ever hit Lagertha across the face, they would be fighting and it would not be playful. That's true. She would have beat the crap out of him. I mean, he's pretty strong. He probably would have won. But she would have tried. And with this guy, nope. And I don't know if she thinks that that is protecting Bjorn. If she takes Mm. it, he'll leave Bjorn alone. But she didn't have any problem leaving the last husband that treated her badly. I just, I don't understand in four years how she went from being this famous, strong, powerful shield maiden to a lady that is okay with getting beat up. Well, she left that last relationship pretty devastated. You know, the love of her life had been unfaithful to her. And lied to her, and then accepted another woman over her. And she almost lost her son, you know, and then luckily he came with her after all. But she was pretty broken down at that point. Maybe he was a really, really bad rebound. And then it just... People do that. I don't know. I have a hard time imagining Lagertha this way, but maybe she thought she didn't... Maybe she was settling for a man that wasn't perfect for her just because she needed... I mean, she could be a farmer, but... You can't farm if you don't own any land or own any livestock. No, no, no. I mean, she could have married a farmer. She didn't have to marry somebody who was at the same level as her last husband. That's true. Maybe she was used to that. She had been an Earl's wife for a little while. Or maybe it would have been... I, I don't know how classes really work in in that time. Maybe she didn't want to move down in a class. Maybe it was really a huge, huge deal. Um, once you've your like cast kind of has gone up to to go back into a lower one like siggy yeah but it doesn't seem like it's been that bad for siggy i mean she's not the earl's wife obviously but nobody's 
shunning her, looking down on her because she's not Anne Earl's wife anymore. Well, and she, I mean, she was kind of lucky to get Rolo when we found out later, which wasn't like that lucky after all. But Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he was willing to vouch for her was a big deal. And she also slept with King Horik. So maybe she is trying to climb still. Yeah. Social climber. I, this is Lagertha thing. This is not the Lagertha that we knew. Yeah. And I hope that she comes back. And I hope that she's not so far away anymore. I don't. I don't mm. want my storylines to be so spread apart. <laughs> Come back together. Do you want her to be back in Kattegat or just somewhere close by? Okay, I want her to be back in Kattegat, but I cannot see why she would go back. So they need to give me a reason for her to go back. Especially now that Jarl Borg is running it. That would be weird. Maybe she'll go back and she'll hang out with him because they both hate Ragnar. (laughs) I can't imagine her teaming up with someone against Ragnar, though. I don't think she will. I think that she, as much as Ragnar hurt her and disrespected her, I think that she still has affection and respect for him as Bjorn's father. And so I don't think she would go up against him. Do you have any predictions for what's going to happen next? Let's start with England. What's going to happen next in England with this potential peace? Maybe not Egbert and Ragnar. Maybe Ragnar is going to create some sort of peace agreement with the king, even though the king doesn't seem like he's down for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. But Ragnar is pretty set on colonizing England for the Vikings. I'm pretty sure at some point in this season, we're going to get a Ragnar Bjorn reunion. Okay. Maybe Bjorn will go to England and farm land Ah. with Ragnar, in Ragnar's place, at Ragnar's request. I don't know. Something like that. I'm not sure what's going to happen to Aslog and the kids and Rolo and Siggy. In the mountains, how long can they sustain themselves there? Yeah, that's true. And also, especially if Ragnar's decided to stay in England for a while, he's deserted his family. Yeah. And doesn't know that they've been dehoused. <laughs> so evicted. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think they can stay in the mountains long. They're gonna have to figure something else out. Maybe they'll go to England. Oh. Maybe they'll go meet Ragnar there and say, hey, remember how you ditched us a couple months ago? Well, <laughs> while you were gone, they took over. Maybe Sigurd Snake in the Eye will become a ward of King Eckbert. Oh my gosh. Like super Stark style. Yeah, maybe. And Reek or uh, Theon. Maybe Ragnar will give up Kattegat without oh. fighting anymore and just colonize England. Okay. <laughs> I still think, though, that even if he does decide to do that, he still is going to want to get back at Jarl Borg for doing what he did to Kattegat. Okay. Is that where you you were thinking for the revenge eye for an eye thing? I think that's a possibility. Okay. Though, you know, we've discussed this many times about this show. The timing is so wonky. Yeah. That who knows how much time will have passed between episodes. I swear to God, if it's four years again, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> we get back to Kat to get. Lagatha is married to Borg, who has taken Roller as a slave. <laughs> and I'm trying to think of who else we get to And Baby in. Snake in the Eye is 17. <laughs> <laughs> and married to Siggy. Because he likes older women. <laughs> He's an old soul. <laughs> He's the rebirth of Aslog's father. Oh my god. It was like a reincarnation. Yeah. I like it. What about Bjorn? What's going to happen to him? I think that Bjorn is tired of living with Earl Douchebag. (laughs) And I think that with or without permission, he's just going to leave. Ah. And go back to... Well, he might go back to Kattegat and not be able to find Ragnar. And find Rolo, possibly. And say, you know, what can I do... To help out my half siblings and my stepmother, or he might just sail to England and say, "All right, Dad, here I am. Do you want me to start a farm?" Though, 
Though, <laughs> now that I've said that, Biron doesn't know how to farm. They stopped doing that when he was, like, 12. Yeah, also, he's supposedly a good fighter. That's what they said when, when Earl Jack was talking to him. So, sounds like he might want to be a warrior. Okay, I think he's going to end up either in the mountain camp or at Ragnar's place in England. What about what the seers prophesized about Biron? Oh, that he's going <gasps> to marry a king's daughter. Does King Ek- Ekbert have a daughter? We've seen his son. And sail all the way around the world, or all the way to... No, uh, sail to a sea that has no tides. Oh, yeah. What did we decide that was? <laughs> we we didn't. It's like a lake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that was the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if King Ekbert has a daughter, maybe that's the king's daughter he'll marry. Maybe that's how they'll make peace. Political marriage. Yes. That's how you uh, get that. I mean, that's how you do that. Do you think she'll be... I'm just imagining the <laughs> the Frey wedding in oh. Song of Ice and Fire Yuck. when they brought uh, Edmir Tully and he had to marry the girl and he didn't know who he'd get. Mm-hmm. And he thought he'd get all the, the homely girls and he ended up getting the prettiest one. He was pleasantly surprised. Yes. Yes, he yeah. was. It does seem like that's a reasonable guess, though. I imagine Bjorn would marry someone pretty, considering his attractiveness level, just for a TV kind of a... Well, it's not like anybody in the show is not pretty, so... Yeah. They're not going to put out a casting call for a homely woman <laughs> to play a princess. Probably not. That seems true. I think Aethelwolf is pretty attractive. Yeah, he's not bad. They're much more attractive than King Ayla. Ugh. Yeah. We probably don't ever need to go back there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about uh, Bjorn and Lagertha and how, to me, they look like they're very similar in age. Yes, they do. That's because true. Because he suddenly grew and she has not had gotten a new character that's older. Like <laughs> she he got. was not replaced as an actress. Yeah. I looked up their ages. Alexander Ludwig, who plays Bjorn, is 25. Catherine wow. Winnick... I thought she was, like, maybe 29. She's 39. <gasps> Seriously? She looks so young she for her age. She looks amazing. Yeah, she looks completely amazing. She's going to be like Helen Mirren when she's 70. Just I like can't believe she's super older great. than me. Yeah, me too. That's crazy. Yeah, she seems much younger. Oh, she's so pretty. Yeah. No wrinkles at all. No. She's also um, a, a trained martial artist. Cool. Yeah, so I'm guessing she probably does most of her own stunts in the show. Or at least most of her own fighting. She's an impressive woman. Yes. And she wants to be Black Canary from Arrow. I heard she's, like, lobbying for that part, which I guess that means they're making a movie or something. A new Green Arrow movie. Well, a Green Arrow movie or maybe something, like, related to the Justice League? Yeah. Who's in the Justice League? Do you mean which characters or which actors? Yeah, which characters? Uh, Superman, Batman. Wonder Woman, then, I guess. Wonder Woman. Okay. Uh, Aquaman. Oh, that's right. And I believe The Flash. Huh, I'm waiting for the Aquaman movie, but apparently it's not till like, 2019. Yeah, it's it's a ways out. And I saw somebody w- online was complaining about it uh, because the they had a, a still from it. The actor was holding his trident. Yeah, I see. But it has five spears on it. <laughs> and they're like, that's not a trident, dude. Try means three. It's a quintent. <laughs> <laughs> that's much more awkward to say. Yeah. I just need me some more call Drogo. Yeah. I, I gotta have, I've got to have it. I'm dying. When I read that he was playing Aquaman, I was like, well, that's a weird choice. But then I saw a picture of him and was like, yeah, all right. Perfect. Yeah. Now it's time for Cheek of the Week, where we talk about something that we really like and want to share with each other and with you. My Cheek is a website called American Science and Surplus. You can go to SciPlus.com, S-C-I-Plus.com. They have just a crazy number of amazingly cool items. It's uh, really bad for impulse shopping when I go. I get their email and I'm like, <laughs> I want 40 of these items. They have a huge range of things. They have, as you'd expect, uh, science type items. You can buy all sorts of science accoutrement like beakers and all kinds of containers and glassware and, and lots of different things. They have um, science type toys for kids. They've got, I think at one point, 
I saw a, a little desk trebuchet you can buy and you can assemble it <laughs> to have this little <laughs> trebuchet to throw things on your desk, which actually sounds like something our dad would love. Maybe we'll get one of those one day. They also have tons of surplus stuff. They have uh, military bags and surplus like restaurant like equipment they also have a really strange assortment of of just different kinds of toys i have bought so much stuff from this website over the years uh hmm. i'm looking at my order history and holy crap i have a an eight inch diameter disco ball i bought <laughs> a ton of different kinds of flashlights that i got as stocking stuffers for my husband one year because he likes leds and he needed some lights for the garage so i got all these different kinds of lights <laughs> I got these stick-on, fuzzy, velvety, alphanumeric stickers that I gave to Rosanna's kids one year to label things with all these names. Mm -hmm. And some breakable geodes. And a little uh, metal pirate ship you can assemble. But my favorite things that I've gotten from American Science and Surplus are two things. A pottery tool set and a dental tool set which seems really weird until I tell you what I use them for. I carve crazy pumpkins every year, like super detailed, really fun designs, kind of like double layered. Sometimes the skin is still there and peeled off. And if it's not, I do all sorts of things and make crazy designs. And I use dental tools and pottery tools to do a lot of the detail on them. I have this little, this box with a wood burner, both of which I got from American Saints and Surplus. And I keep all my, <laughs> my special Halloween tools in because I'm serious about this. And it is really fun. But they have just a crazy number of things. Lots and lots of different stuff. And we have a code that you can use if you want to get 10% off of your purchase there. If you just go to SciPlus, S-C-I-P-L-U-S dot com, you can use the offer code CHEEKY to get 10% off a purchase. And you should go there now and buy out everything because they have a ton of awesome stuff. So Rosanna, what's your cheek this week? My cheek this week is a TV show, though I feel like that is an understatement <laughs> for the type for the title being a TV show. Um, this is like an epic, uh, eight person movie spread over several episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix original series. It's called Sense8. I just marathoned the second season that came out um, a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, usually I get to watch an entire season of anything in one weekend, but I actually had to spread this out over several days. So Does that mean ouch. you're done with your 20,000 series uh, Law & Order marathon? It was Criminal Minds, not Law oh, & Order. Oh, that's right. And I am caught up to what is on Netflix. However, the current season isn't on Netflix oh. yet. It's still airing. So I'm caught up with as much as I can be caught up. <laughs> but Sensei is an actual Netflix produced show. Yes. So Sensei is a show about eight people that are from all different parts of the world. And one day, completely inexplicably, they all become linked through their brains. They can... Um, sort of go into each other's bodies with their minds and be in the places that the rest of them are in. And they can sort of borrow each other's skills, uh, which is really super cool. It and it's not, at, it's not at all like a superhero or mutant kind of movie, even though that's what it sounds like, <laughs> the way I'm describing <laughs> it. It's just people that are living that, for whatever reason, are all connected mentally. And they call them sensates or... Um, Homo... Homo sensum? They, they didn't start using that term till the second season. Sensorium. Homo sensorium. Okay, that's it. So the characters, a couple are from the United States. One is from Korea. One is from Mexico. One is from Germany. Is Wolfgang German? Okay. Right. Uh, Berlin, one yeah. is from Africa and one is from India. And one is from... Where's Riley from? Iceland. Iceland. Oh! And the character from Iceland, when she's at home, has the most beautiful scenery. Yeah, They filmed this show... From all of these places, they go to all these locations, and the show is beautifully made. The acting is very, very good. The story is very engaging. It's just a really, really good show. I know a lot of people have seen it, but if you haven't seen it, I highly, highly recommend it. Now, don't watch it with your children, <laughs> because there is a <laughs> ton of bad language and a lot of nudity and a lot of violence. And I know right now I just hooked a couple of you, didn't I? <laughs> Some of you were like, what? Bad language? Violence? Sex? I'm in. <laughs> An orgy? Why not? Yes, there was. I forgot about that part. <laughs> yeah, it's a How could you forget? It was I, and I gotta say, Wolfgang, who's from Germany, and Riley, who's from Iceland, are my two out of the eight. They're my two favorites. Really? Yes. I don't care about Riley. 
I love Ren. No, no, no. I love Wolfgang. He is definitely my top in Leto. Oh, okay, I really like Leto, too. I mean... The sun is growing on me in the second season. Sun is amazing. I th- yeah. I really like all of them. I do, yes. I like every single one of them. And I love... It's so cool because once they realize what's happening and the consciousness can be in the other person's body. They, the way they film it, it looks like they're just standing there talking to each other, even though, really, there's only one of them there. Um, but they're so sweet to each other. They, yeah. They're so helpful. They they give whatever they can. They're all really connected, even though they don't know why. And it's just a really great story when they talk about um, learning to deal with this, because it's very distracting <laughs> to have seven people talking in your head. Yeah, it's really great, too. It, it breaks down a lot of stereotypes. It really does. For not just gender stereotypes, but uh, cultural and country stereotypes as well. Yes. Which I like. It's a really, really great show. It is. I think the writing is fantastic. Yes. I think anybody that hasn't seen it should just start watching it and you'll get hooked. You might need to take a day off (laughs) to finish it. um, Because once you start, you're not going to want to stop. It's just amazing. Just that's that's it. I mean, it's just amazing. (laughs) Now I want to watch it again. I I know. The second season also. Oh, I've so been to the first good. one too, of course, but yeah. That show. So, listeners, you can visit our website to find all our Cheeks of the Week, learn about our other podcast, send us questions and feedback, and support the show through our Amazon affiliate link at somethingcheekypodcast.com slash Amazon. That's our episode. Please leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at somecheek and facebook.com slash somecheek. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Da 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 da